Okay, I'm at Val's house in Darien. And the thought process is to transplant one, two, three. So there'll still be the two boxwoods into this bed over here. So they're integrated into this bed. And then this would all be mulch. So mulch going around here, tying right to the driveway, because it doesn't make sense leaving a thin strip of grass. So this is all mulch running through here. Through here is all mulch, right? And then the mulch is gonna finish just behind these plants and trees. So this is gonna be an existing bed that we're gonna keep exactly where it is. And then the mulch is gonna tie right to the driveway and again, wrap around. So it's called, call it, it, it's like a uh, 40 foot by 12 foot mulch bed in here. Okay. Transplanting these three into that area. Then a separate little mulch ring, call it a four foot diameter mulch ring underneath this tree. Okay. We have to think about electrical, if there's any electrical through here, because electrical might break when you start ripping out rocks and grading this area. So you just have to understand that's part of the job that you might, the electrical outlet might not work. I'm not sure if you're using it anyways, but anyways, that's a, that's a situation. Um, so the idea would be clean out all the rocks. We have to come here first probably spray all the weeds with weed killer. Spray this whole area with weed killer probably twice, early August. All right, so then come end of August, it's all dead. Less weed competition. And then start over here in this corner. So the grass would start kind of, grass would start over here in this corner outside of where it's mulched. So this, again, this mulch goes all the way down. So it's actually longer than that. It's about 60, 70 feet long. And the mulch would finish at the entrance of the driveway about 12 to 15 feet wide. All right. Um, so that's a whole separate little project. Mulch, clean up the weeds, the whole thing in that area. Okay. Then there's gonna be all the stump grinding. So I'm assuming all the guys are gonna take care of all the stumps, say over 12 inches in diameter. We'll just have to set some sort of size as far as what he's grinding. Anything over 12 inches diameter, I'm assuming he's gonna end up, or say 10 inches diameter, he's gonna end up grinding. All right, and then you come in through here. I would even say everything over eight inches diameter because it's faster for him to grind it than it is for us to pull it. So anything over eight inches, we're gonna figure that he's gonna grind down one foot below the grade so you don't have to worry about it. There's a lot of stumps through here. And the lawn would go pretty much up to the fence line. If there's a stump right next to the fence line, we won't touch it, we'll just leave it because if you try to rip it up, you're gonna mess up the fence. All right. Then some of these rocks, any, any of the rocks that we can move with our machine will move. The rocks that are like the tip of the iceberg that are huge rocks that are well under the ground, we can't move. We have to leave them where they are. Okay. So it's this whole area going through here. The wood chips, we'd have to clean up. You know, when you clean these up, you're gonna get about 70% of them. You're not gonna get 100%, but you wanna remove most of the wood chips because that prevents grass seed from growing. And the wood chips, we could probably, easy thing is just haul them off the property, I guess, with the, with the truck. Got to figure out what this is here. There's a concrete, I'm not sure if that's a well or old, old septic. Then there would be the edge of the lawn here. So the lawn goes all the way this way, right? And in here where it's really shady, I'm thinking you'd end up uh, having the lawn kind of stop. So this is the edge of the lawn. We'll go from there around this tree where my finger is and then curve and then tuck around this tree. So that would stay exactly how it is. We wouldn't touch this area. Outside of maybe removing the big, big hunks of sticks, but not raking, not removing the leaves, just leaving it natural. So again, through here, 
and then wrapping the grass for them would go to here. So that's one area that would remain natural, leave exactly how it is, no grading, just the big hunks of sticks coming out. And actually, the more I think about this, I'm gonna backtrack for a second here. So it's my opinion. Uh, I think that's fine, just like we said. So it starts over there, wraps around this way, comes through here, wraps around there. The lawn then can continue to the fence over here. This is all lawn. The lawn's gonna be sparse over here because there's a lot more shade, just so you know. So lawn, lawn, lawn. And then you're gonna pick up with another wooded section with no lawn where my finger is. So this is the edge of the lawn. Cutting through here and around these trees. Where my finger is, this is the edge of the lawn. Cutting through here. Through here my finger is, and then back to there. So this is all, again, a wooded area. There's not enough sunlight to get grass to grow. And same thing. I think you leave it kind of how it is, right? I, I think this area, we're not gonna, I'm not going to put anything in the quote for having to do anything in this area. I think you leave it how it is and call it a day, okay? Then... Then this is lawn going, like I said, this is the edge of the lawn right here. So this is lawn going through here, all lawn. And then the next edge of lawn would be starting here. So my finger from the fence to here, connecting to the front of that tree, to the front of that tree, and then just going straight back to the fence post. So from the fence post to that tree, that's the next edge of the lawn, okay? Then all this gets cleaned up. Like I said, there's quite a few rocks in here. You probably need about three inches of topsoil on average cutting through here. This all gets ground down. Like you said, the better idea to put your vegetable garden is over there. So tucked back in that corner, you get a lot of Western exposure. That makes the most sense. And this should all be lawn in here. So the, the grade is not really gonna change. You're just gonna remove the humps. You're just removing humps and filling in where you have holes. But you're not doing any major regrading or excavation. So this is all pretty much the same, all right? The only real humps is there's a hump right there. There's a hump underneath these plants in here. And there's a few low spots where water is sitting. That's kind of what you're filling in, but again, uh, you're not doing major regrading. It doesn't make any sense. There's no irrigation here. So, you're gonna, you know, when you put the seed in, you're going to want to water it twice a day, morning and then early afternoon with a sprinkler. You could consider getting an irrigation quote, but to irrigate your lawn and your lawn and your house and everything is probably around 10 grand. So you got to consider that if that's a good investment for you or not. The issue is if you don't have irrigation, just realize that typically at this time of the year, your lawn is completely brown for about six weeks. And your lawn will never look the same quality as someone who has an irrigation system. So if you want a really nice lawn, you sort of have to do an irrigation system. If you're okay having more of a natural looking lawn, then you don't need one. Okay. Um, so I would say you want to get rid of the lily of the valley, which is in here. Got to see where your septic is again. I think it's septic's over here. You want to get rid of this, grind this all down, excavate all this out. The ledge is going to obviously have to stay. There's a big rock. Um, and I would end up maybe just transplanting these two elsewhere on the property they're big i mean you're going to need to put a 40 inch ball on this so and it's got to be hand dug so it's kind of expensive to move these but i would definitely not leave them where they are it's going to look very abnormal to have just a few five foot tall plants in the middle of your lawn that's going to look really funny 
So I'd try to repurpose them, move them elsewhere. I'd just get rid of this because it's not, it's leggy. All the, you know, all the deer have been eating the bottom of it. It's not worth transplanting. So, and then the other reason you want to move these because it allows you to have a more of a consistent feel. So when you're looking outside your house, this is nice and clean. And then you could add some green giant arborvitaes along the back to try to screen out the neighbor, okay, in front of those trees in the back. And that's your best move. So this all gets ripped out in here too. This, this is the hump I was talking about that has to be cut down. Um, so that's it. So I'll put this together for you and we'll, we'll take it from there. Thanks.